So let's return to the personal side for uh, a minute. So you, you grew up uh, here in Russia at what I think is a very interesting point in history. You know, you grew up much like I did in the 80s and 90s and watched, uh, you know, society evolve, mm -hmm. chemistry evolve. Uh, maybe you could tell us, uh, especially uh, maybe our North American and Euro Western European viewers, uh, maybe how your experiences were perhaps a bit different than, than ours. And more importantly, how do you see uh, how chemistry has evolved in Russia in the last 20 years? And maybe more importantly, how will it continue to evolve in the next decade or so? Well, uh, my, my time of uh, PhD student here in this institute was uh, probably on during one of the most difficult periods in Russian science. It was in the 90s, just after the fall of the USSR. And of course, we, it was a very difficult time because we did not have much support for science and education. And personally, for myself, I was able to get this PhD degree only because of the help of my parents. They, really? gave, they gave me a chance to, be, to become a scientist and they supported me during this PhD, my PhD time. And uh, afterwards, I think that uh, science, in, science in Russia has a very good and fundamental traditions. And uh, people is more interested in these fundamental questions and mechanistic stuff. Uh, probably we have less research right now uh, dealing with an application or development of methods and so on. But we have a really a good, um, good traditions and um, probably good background for doing mechanistic and fundamental stuff. And this is one of the differences that I probably may notice. And um, I think that if the conditions and if support of science will improve in our country, and that is what we observe right now, mm -hmm. because the financing of science became much better. Uh, we have a, a new Russian Science Foundation, which has been opened uh, recently. And Russian Science Foundation offers very good grants to do research in various fields of science. And I'm pretty sure that in the next few years, we will see more and more research coming from Russia. And uh, I think it will be a good start. Well, I think that's terrific because the, I, I agree with you. I think the, the the history and the fundamentals of science and especially organic chemistry and organometallic chemistry in Russia have been really impressive and to see it grow would be uh, really wonderful. So if you could go anywhere in the world for one year on paid leave and do chemistry, where would that be? If I would be paid well enough to go anywhere, <laughs> then I would go to space. Space? Yes. Okay. I want to see uh, another planet, stars and galaxies. I am pretty sure that there are a lot of undiscovered chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> and I am, of course, I am sure that we will find an organometallic chemistry <laughs> in space. That was uh, one of my dreams. Organometallic chemistry? That was not an answer I expected. <laughs> so good job. <laughs> well, um, if we study a complicated chemical reaction, like for example, if we study a catalytic reaction, where we have a transition metal complex, metal cluster, and nanoparticles simultaneously in the same flask, and a lot of uh, chemical reactions taking place in parallel. And uh, when I have this flask in my hands, I feel like it is also like a small universe. That small un universe which is made from molecules. Right. And uh, the complexity of this small universe is somewhat related to the complexity that we can observe in the universe outside. So I don't feel much difference mm -hmm. between the universe that was created by chemists and uh, uh, the big universe. And uh, I think that chemistry is everything that contains molecules. So we have many, many opportunities to discover chemistry because molecules are everywhere. So if you thought about what if I restricted you to Earth, where would you go? <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of really beautiful places where I would like to go. If you think, uh, if you think about something outside chemistry, uh, outside chemistry, my family is my greatest inspiration. I have two kids and I love my wife very much. And if I would have a time to do something outside chemistry, we will travel and we would see these uh, very wonderful places that mm. are available on our planet. Great. So let's talk about advice for a minute. So let's start with you. What's the best piece of advice you've been ever given by a mentor, by someone in your family? Well, if we, 
if you think about uh, uh, one of the very interesting advice that I have got. I learned a lot from my students and I have got, um, uh, one of my students told me, we have discussed a chemistry pro problem, uh, his project, and there was a point which was uh, really impossible to make and it was even crazy to try. And I told him uh, that you shouldn't do this because it's unlikely to give any results, you will spend a lot of time and this is even uh, crazy and non-scientific to try it. And uh, he didn't follow my <laughs> suggestion, he still tried it. And he found so, f so amazing chemical transformation. So I think the best advice that uh, I have been given, nothing is impossible. If you try and if you will be, like, if you work hard enough and if you have a good tools, finally you will do a very great chemistry. So nothing is impossible. It is the best advice I have been given. <laughs> great, thank you. And then what about your students? What advice do you give them? Or, or maybe another way to ask this question is, uh, if you could go back in time and give yourself advice, say in 1996 when you started, or 1995, what advice do you, uh, do you give? Well, uh, if I would go back and um, if, I, if I would have such an opportunity, I, I would try not to waste my time you know, on, the, on the things which are really not important, and secondary things. or things like that. Uh, I'm, I advise my students, I, I try to maintain myself to be concentrated and to do most important things. Well, time flies, it goes very quickly and after some times you can turn back and you can look what you have done, for example. At the end of the year you can turn back and you can look what you have done during this year and you may not be satisfied with what you achieved. So uh, the best advice probably is to be concentrated and to select the best things. And it's a challenge because it's difficult, it is difficult to make. Mm -hmm. When you turn back, you can easily say this was a good point for, to make your efforts and this probably was a waste of time. So the best advice is to select, uh, to know how to select carefully, which is the best direction and, wi and which one is just a waste of time. Great. Well, thank you, Valentin. Uh, it was great uh, hearing your perspectives on both the journal, on your research, and personally. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia. And again, congratulations on the lectureship. And uh, it's our 35th anniversary this year at the journal. And uh, thank you for publishing with us. And I hope you continue to do so in the future. Thank you very much, Paul. It's, uh, it's a very great honor to receive this prize from the Organometallics, from my favorite journal. And I am, I am very grateful. Uh, to ACS for this opportunity and uh, I'm very I'm looking forward to attend the ACS meeting and to meet with the chemists with my friends and all, all around the world and uh, I send my best regards to all authors of organometallics <laughs> to all readers of organometallics and of course to all scientists thank you very much thank you